Hey family, what's going on? We're back. Uh, this 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 one hour thing is dope at times, but at other times it's an issue. Oh my goodness, it's an issue. Welcome back, family. Sorry about that. You know how ends to do. Um, yeah. So like we're talking about um, MGTOW, right? And um, it's, it's, I want you, I want you. Since we're believers, right? Since we're believers, let's approach this from a scriptural perspective, all right? And from a purpose-driven perspective. When you talk about MGTOW, men going their own way. Whew, and I did it my way. <laughs> yeah. All right. The Which, very, the way, if I could, somebody called the most, um, and it was a Satanist who said this. So that is like the most Satan, Satanistic, or most, the most like uh, demonic, Luciferian, Satanistic song like ever written. Because yeah. do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. Men going, yeah. I'm doing it my way. I'm not doing it God's way. I'm doing it my way. Exactly. Anyway, keep going. And look what happened after that. Look at the breakdown this the uh, uh the stuff that happened in society after that. Just because Frank's you, and I before you do that though, if I if I may, I just want to give like just a couple sentences for anybody who doesn't know what the organization is. Yeah. MGTOW, MGTOW is an organization of men. Um, and yeah. it is men who have usually been hurt by a woman, they're at the end of a divorce or, you know, child custody, etc. They've had to give half, they don't have custody of their kids, whatever it is, but there's a brokenness, there's a bitterness, and as a result of that, they are embracing what is, I, what I would call an idealism or an, an, uh, an ideal that is kind of the opposite of feminine. And as you all know, I'm not a feminist, or excuse me, it's the op opposite of feminism. Um, and as you, as you know, I'm not a feminist. Um, which it's it's yet yeah, sort of the other polar opposite, which is basically um, feminism. One of the reasons that one of the issues that I have with it is it's basically everything is men's fault. Men are all wrong. They're you know patriarchy is bad. Rule of the father is bad. Men are inherently bad. They're inherently selfish and evil. And if they are allowed to do anything where they are put in a leadership position, they are untrustworthy. And you know that's just that's all the evils of the world come out of them. Well, MG Chow is the same and the opposite. Women are evil, you know, if they're allowed to operate, then they, you know, everything about them is just going to be, they're the root of all evil, you cannot trust them, they're all whores or they're all, it's just whatever ne negative stereotype you can think of on women, that's what MG Chow has. And the problem with both of these is they prey on people who are broken or bitter or hurt or abused and unhealed. And people who are prone to having any unhealed issues with the opposite sex tend to gravitate towards these ideals and then utilize these things as like war against the opposite sex. And I'm not for war. I don't believe that men are all evil and that the, masculinity is inherently toxic and that, you know, all men are selfish and evil. And, and I don't believe all women are either, is my point. So I just wanted to say, it's it's a it's an opposite ideology where a bunch of men have gotten together and they've decided in essence they don't need women. Yeah. They don't need women. They're not going to marry. Uh, they will use women for sex if they need them occasionally, but for the most part, they're going to be over here on a lot island by themselves doing their own thing and f these women. That's it. It's look. So the guy um, said, What's wrong with MG Tao? That. That's what's wrong with MG Tao. Look, the thing is, you know, uh, D, D initially made reference to do what thou wilt shall be the sum of the law. And when you're talking about MGTOW, and that's exactly what they're doing. You know, nowadays, everybody's following their truth. You know, their truth. Which changes from day to day and situation to situation. Exactly. So, you know, if, 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 it's, if it's dynamic... And if it's subjective, it cannot be truth. It cannot be law. Laws are fixed. But by their very definition, they are fixed. So a lot of people have theories that they're putting forward as laws. 
and MGTOW is espousing some of these theories, which which usually are not based or grounded in fact, mm -hmm. but just sentiment and usually negative sentiment towards a sex that we all desire, mm -hmm. lust after, to be with. But you know, when when we engage with them from a place of ignorance and misunderstanding and limited knowledge, we end we end up getting ourselves hurt um, with now we want to hate them. You know, I know guys who have, who, who, who never went for driving classes, did not get their licenses, drive cars, crash cars, all right? Their ignorance got them into that uh, situation. Their pride got them into that situation. Their limited knowledge got them into that situation. But they don't stop driving cars. They don't start trash talking cars. They don't start like talking, you know, like bad mouthing the uh, the automobile manufacturers. You know, they 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 understand that I did not equip myself, you know, probably for this. Or they'll be on some like, well, I'm just gonna go get another car and keep it pushing. You get what I'm saying? And they'll probably end up in that situation uh, situation again because they haven't learned from it. It's no different from from you know uh, relationships with women and and vice versa. Get knowledgeable. Stop, stop, stop following your truth. You know, the one thing that the MGTOW uh, movement really pushed that really irritated me was this whole, you know, um, old school Western, Western ideology of it's impossible to understand women. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. It's the biggest load of hogwash. We are both spiritual beings who come from the exact same entity the exact same being all right we we want the same things we desire the same things we need the same things we express yeah. our desires and receive our, our um, um these things differently yeah. but we want the same thing we yeah. both want love we both want to be honored we both want to feel safe we both want to feel respected we both want to be cared for it's a human thing mm -hmm. Now, are you coming to the table with something to offer? And when you're coming to the table with something to offer, are you offering it to someone who has properly appraised what you're bringing to the table and valuing it or not? Most of these men who join these organizations, and I was one of them, okay, hey, are I'm men a who... Feminist. I said it too. We've all been yeah. there. We've all been there. You know, like, I was one of them. I went there ignorant, foolish. A lot of the time I knew I'm not supposed to be with this individual, but oh my goodness, she's cute. She's hot. The sex is amazing. She's got absolutely no character, but who cares? Because I feel this way about her. Okay. None of us would make those kinds of decisions about our careers. None of those um, 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 of us would make those kinds of decisions about um, uh, our well-being, our safety, our health. But when it comes to our hearts, all of a sudden we become flippant. Uh, well, I, mean, moment, like, I know yeah. with your lifeblood, with the thing that literally you yeah, can take it out, you can't. You can chop off a finger, you can chop mm -hmm. off an arm. You can't live without a heart. You can't live without your heart, figuratively <laughs> or literally. You can't. And like you know, that's when you. That's when. You, that's when depression sets in, when your heart is broken. Yeah. You know. So why are we being more circumspect with our hearts? And these guys are being told, no, like it's not you. It's them. The same way women are being told, it's not you, it's these, it's these men. We're both messed up. Yeah. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory. All of us. We're all messed up. Now, how about we get our minds right and start going about it God's way? Yeah. Because men who go about it God's way are having very different experiences with women. Absolutely. You know, um, 2D Thoughts is one of those men. You know, it takes a lot of strength for a man to say, I love this woman, but I'm going to, you know, discipline myself and I'm going to lead. I want to show her how to discipline herself, okay, right. by disciplining myself and by right. safeguarding with marriage. She means so much to me. And what we are hoping to build together is so much more than just my feelings for her, my temporary feelings. I feel horny now, and the next hour, I'm not going to feel horny. I feel like I want her now. In the next five minutes, I'm going to feel guilty. Feelings are ephemeral. They're fleeting. They, they're fluid. And he is approaching this from a place of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. 
So he's saying, let me lead you. And while I'm leading you, baby, lead me too. Yeah. Because they're, you know what I'm saying? Now it's a given. The very yeah. thing these men are calling for, the partnership, he's asking for it. Let's walk this path together. When I'm weak, help me. Yeah. And when you see calling my accountability partner, partner up, please understand. I know you're going to feel like I'm rejecting you, but please understand that I'm doing this for us. And she understands it. She gets it. She's like, yo, you know, call, call the dude up. Yeah. Call the dude up. This is not rejection. This is you looking after us. They're, yeah. they're both approaching this with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Not emotions, not feelings, not, not lust, not, not desires. This is what's required yeah. for knowledge. You know, so when we talk about your MGTOWs, my issue is that they're not looking at the purpose of the man, the woman. If you look at the very definition of male and female. Male is one half of the human race. Female, one half of the human race. When you bring them together, you have a whole. On the soul level, you have a whole. Okay? You cannot then say men are going your own way. To be with who? <laughs> you're going with you your half. You so shown it when you said that. To be with who? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like, you know, <laughs> this word, this word, like, you know, who are you going to be with? Because yeah. you know, you, you know, you need to be with this person. Yeah. The reason why you bought that car is because of that person. The reason why you bought that house is because of that person. You dress a certain way because of that person. You carry yourself a certain way because of that person. You got the PhD because of that person. You knew she was going to look at you differently. It wasn't for your boys. You knew she was you going to respect you, admire you, esteem you, look up to you, think you're an awesome guy. Oh, my God, he's so built, big and strong and handsome and smart. He's so smart. He's so accomplished. Look at how much he's achieved. Wow, I bet he could lead me. Wow, I bet he could show me something. Wow, I bet he could provide a life for me. Wow, wow, what an amazing man. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't need like, no, we don't need those women. Like, you know, we're joking about this the other day. Like, it's a common joke amongst um, um, uh, bodybuilders and, and uh, weightlifters, you know, where you you go into the gym thinking, oh, this is what girls want, you know, <laughs> so you, you the gym and you lift those weights and you get super buff. You know who surrounds you? The guys. <laughs> Yo, bro, how much do you bench? How much do you curl? How, how much do you do that? You know what I'm saying? Do be like, oh, okay, fine. He filled out that suit nicely. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. He's like, she doesn't care. <laughs> she wants to know how much are you earning? What's your uh, 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 strategy Friends for the future? For? Yes. Yes. Can you provide for me? Can you care care for me? Can you look after our children? Can you be responsible? Can you be a man of uh, 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 integrity? Like that's you know, all she wants. But I never forgot that I. And I'm sorry. You're right. The end of that sentence is right, because I cut off the end of that sentence. That's all she wants. You're absolutely right. I could care less about a muscle. I really don't care. Um, that doesn't mean I want you to be sloppy in your body, but going to try to go be a bodybuilder, I don't give a dog on. I could care less about that. Um, having said all of that, in addition, I think uh, I lost it. Lost it. Lost it. I lost it. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, totally gone. Totally gone. Sorry. Like, should have just, no, no. It was me trying to, like, help you to finish your sentence. Um, what women really want, um, not bodybuilding, and I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I do wish that men knew what women really want. And I wish that women knew what men really want as well. You know what I mean? Um, mm. Because I think, particularly, let's put it the other way, what wives and husbands want because there's a lot of people who do just want whatever um yeah. but i'm saying what wives want what husbands want and what people want when they are looking to actually build a foundational structure of a marriage that's actually going to have the possibility of lasting and thriving um and being something wonderful healthy functional and um god breathed as well yeah. and there's a you know there's a different standard and there are different things that we're looking for when that's what we're doing versus, you know, you're hot, you'll do. 
Can I just deal with um uh, something Austin the Dreamer said? And that's sure. a very powerful point to make. So he says, I don't know. I just believe the child custody system is not good for men. Also, divorce law is bad, but I'll get married. Um, love my girl. Okay. The child custody system is not good for men. It's not good for women. Thank it's you. not good for women. Thank you. Okay. Thank it's not good. It's not like if if anything. Let me take that back. It's it's not good for women. It's not good for the kids. It's good for men because it should drive us in the upbringing of our children. You need to start that sentence again. Whatever present. just happened, whatever just happened, your voice got warped. Oh, it just happened again. again. No, man. Hold on a second. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to do this again. It's a whole process. I figured it out. Uh, and you were saying it should drive us to. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. It's good for men because it should drive us to go for it. It should, it should drive us to do the right things. At the back of your mind, you should always have it that there is a government waiting to take custody of your child from you. Yes. If you don't handle your business, if you don't choose the right woman, if you don't equally yoke yourself, you, you will lose your child. So many of us are going into marriage and parenting or, or, or fatherhood without information. Right. We're going there thinking, you know, um, <laughs> let me take a few steps back. We live in, le in a legal system, okay? From the moment you're born, you don't belong to yourself. Yeah. You don't belong to yourself. This, this illusion of freedom that they've given you is not real. The only true freedom you have is spiritual freedom. This is why we're told, you know, to, um, you know, live spiritually. Oof, live you above, <laughs> you know, <laughs> live. <laughs> Sorry. Do better, do better, Nana. Do better. Sorry, keep going. Experience you know, freedom. I gotta choose better. Choose life in order that you and your children may live. Go ahead. May live. Okay. When you're born, the birth certificate that you have is not for your father or for your mother. It's for the government. Mm -hmm. Okay. The social security number you have is not for your father or for your mother. It's for the government. You are their property. They're keeping tabs on you. They're keeping track of you. That's why if you try to commit suicide, they will come and lock you up because you're messing with their property. Uh-oh. You're getting a little they make it, you know, They make it seem like, you know, no, we're doing this for your benefit. But no, 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 no. You are messing with our property. We could possibly profit off of you, you know, in taxes, um, you know, like from your income, from your properties, from your estate, all these things. So don't come over here and mess with what we've got going. OK, if you're going to mess with it, let's just quickly like set you aside over here, cool you out and then take your your stuff from you in the interim or give it to people who can profit from it on our behalf. That's how governments work. OK, when you have children and you send them to schools, you're not sending them to teach um, uh, to learn your values. You learn you're sending them there to learn the values of a government, of a world system, indoctrination. OK. Um, 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 when you're teaching them to get a job, you're not teaching them how to create wealth for the family. You're teaching them how to bring in an income for the family. Earn a salary for a family. Earn, okay? Like, like earn, ashes, earn, okay? That's what you're basically Ooh. doing. Ooh. Ooh, okay? It's an, a job undertaking. You're, you're a dead man walking. When the Bible calls us like dead yet, you know, while we're still alive, that's what it's referring to. Like these, these bodies are dead. You're a zombie unless you get spiritual knowledge. So now, if you know what the, what your purpose as a man, as, as a man is or a male is, then you understand it's, it's, it's to serve God on this planet and to empower your family spiritually as well as physically. 
when you understand that, the first thing you're going to think is, I need somebody who's going to help me achieve this mission. And you're not going to base that decision on how she looks, but what she brings to the table. But because most of us base it on how she looks, even if the character's messed up and we know this woman is not going to be able to walk with us, we still go and have a child with her. And what does she do? Because she, because she doesn't understand her purpose and, or, or her value or the purpose of a marriage or the purpose of having children, she now starts to weaponize the child against you. Yes. Then you look at the legal system that was set up to deprive your family of your leadership. You look at that as like, it's the problem. It's not the problem. It's always been in place. The problem is you who are ignorant of that legal system and its purpose. And can I who just add one, can yes. I, can I one thing right there? The other issue that I have with MG Tao is they would tell you that the solution to this whole thing is never marry. Yeah. But they want to have sex with women and a lot of them want to have children and you're going to have children whether you want to or not if you're having sex, let's be honest. Um, mm. I think it's, it, it's something like 75% of children who are born are unplanned. I think that's like the rate. It's something along those lines. Anyway, the point being, so all, all you're trying to do then is to break the system. You're trying to, and, and that's, that's kind of what all of it is, is, is you're trying to figure out how do I operate outside of the system rather than understanding what the system is and learning how to mm. use it for your benefit rather than you being used by it. So, yeah. yes, you do need to marry. And you need to marry because you're burning with lust. And if you're burning yeah. with lust, you can't control yourself, then you need to marry. And that's fine. Yeah. But pick a wife. Yes. Purpose. Purpose, vision, future, yeah. legacy, and stop picking a wife based on what do what excites my loins. You know what mm. I mean? I love what you said about um, this body is dead, and and it, it took me to I don't know what the scripture is, but it's basically where it's talking about that we have to be born again. You know, and the reason yeah. we have to be born again is because we are dead. We are walking dead people. You know what mm. I mean? Apart from Christ, apart from the relationship mm. with God. He's our life spring. He's our life blood. And so apart from the vine, you can do nothing. That's what I'm saying. So when you're born again, mm. you come alive. But the place where you're alive, as you said, is in your spirit. And that's the reason yeah. why people with no spiritual life that is connected to God. Oh, like the dangers, the dangers. That is so deep. Mm. It is so deep. Um, and having said that, again, as a spiritual being, yeah, then you're going to want to obey. You're going to want to not be apart from God because you can do nothing without him. And so if you're with him and you're obeying him and you're learning what he wants and thinks and feels, which is all that the spirit is is interested in, is what God wants, what God thinks, what God feels, as opposed to what deny wants, thinks and feels, then yeah. you are going to do things this way. And guess what? Uh, I forgot what the guy, Austin, um, if you do things God's way, if you pick a wife, if you remain a husband, if you all stay mm. together, if you, um, and by the way, because they always say the divorce rates outside the church are the same as they are inside of the church. This is true. However, here's yeah. the caveat. They fall drastically when you are not just married, not just a Christian, but actually reading your word, actually having devotionals, actually praying with your wife and attending weekly services, divorce rates yeah. drop. They plummet. Drop. Why? Yeah. Because you can't renew your mind on a regular yeah. basis, talk about it with your spouse, agree on those things, and not be changed. It doesn't work. It, you're going to be changed. He's going yeah. to change you. Your, your mind yeah. is going to be renewed. And because yeah. you guys are reading from the same book, same hymn book, in yeah. agreement, you're in agreement and it even teaches you how to deal with when you're not in agreement. But if you're not looking at it, you don't know how to deal with that. So when you you're in disagreement with your wife, you're going to do things that are going yes. to serve yourself 
and that are going to I, it's uh, it's my house it's my money it's my ego Ooh. I'm a man I can do whatever blah 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 you're not going to deal with her in understanding dwell with her in understanding you're not going to dwell with her as if she's the weaker sex or as if she's gentle mm. you're not going to talk to her the way that you need to you're not going to watch her yeah. with the word you're not going to nurture her you're not going to affirm her you're not going to do all this stuff you're going to have all these guys who are like yeah we don't need them and next thing yeah. you know you're divorced yeah and she's dragging you to custody court right and that's Be not You didn't do what you're supposed to do. I mean, Austin, Austin, I hear you. The child custody system is horrible, but it's not the problem. Right. It's not the problem. The problem is when we as men, look, understand something. Forget all this nonsense we're being fed on TV. Societies, civilizations, communities are built on the man. Family is built on the man. As the man goes, so the family goes. Why do you think to, to this day, feminists are saying we don't need men, but the moment they want any kind of change in the community, who do they address? The men. Yeah. Well, society would be better if the men would just get their act together. No, but I thought you guys had it, had it all figured out. You should be coming up with the solutions then. Get us in line. You can't because you were not created for that purpose. When we decide we're going to get ourselves in line and you guys decide to walk with us as we do that, then we become successful. Yeah. But, but when you detach from us, what's going to happen is we get worse because we have no help. Because it's when not good for a man to be alone. Because it's not, it's not good for a man to be alone. So if they're going their own way, what do you think is going to happen on that side? But, Boss. you know, um, you're asking and we boil it down to should, should have made a better choice ignorant man. Yes, he should have made a better choice, ignorant man. Because even if he chose the wrong woman and, you know, she blindsided him, even if he chose the right woman and for, for whatever reason she chooses to leave him, how he leads himself and how he leads her and the family during that breakup process, during the divorce process, will have a huge impact on whether they end up in a divorce, I'm thinking in a custody uh, trial or working things out amicably. What tends to happen many times is guys get ratcheted up by their friends, by their family, and their egos start to, you know, um, inflate. And you know what? I know what I'm talking about. I've been divorced. I've, I've gone through custody battles. I know exactly what happens in these places. I know what the lawyers say. I know what the friends say, what the family say, what the in-laws say. Sometimes they will say things to work you up. If you have no self-control, you're going to fall for it. You're going to say something you're not supposed to say, do something you're not supposed to do. The lawyers are going to be right there. She's going to be right there recording a conversation. She, she, she'll be keeping a, um, track of all the messages you've been sending on WhatsApp, on whatever, and she's going to present that as evidence. Who do you have to blame for that? And to Who that do you have to blame? Let yeah. me just, because Austin kept going. I, I just want to pick up. I don't want you to stop. I just want to pick up where you are. He says, I agree, choose the right one, but the child custody system is horrible. Men kill That's themselves. That's what I'm referring to. to. Okay, to see their kids, and we boil it down to you should have made a better choice, ignorant men. Listen, yeah. um, to that end, I'm not saying that my heart doesn't bleed or cry or weep for the man who cannot see his children um, or for the man who takes that to an extreme of killing himself because he can't see his yeah. children. I think mm -hmm. all of that is horrible. What I'm telling you is, I'm telling you the solution. I'm telling you the solution. The solution yeah. is do things God's way. It's, I, way. it's nobody wants to hear this, but it's, I, I want to get fit. Go to the freaking gym. Well, surely there's a pill. Surely there's a new, a new, <laughs> surely there's a new, I got it. There's this new contraption that they're selling me at two o'clock in the morning on the radio, you know, and if, and if I do all of these different things and it doesn't work, now I'm sad and depressed and I'm ready to kill myself because I can't lose weight. It's the same thing. Work the freaking plan. Bro, let me be very real with you, man. We have weak men. Guys don't like it when I say this. We have weak men. We have an epidemic of weak men who think suicide is a way out. If you die... Who looks after your children? The very person you don't want them in the custody of now has full custody to them. Right. That is weakness. That's not strength. 
you know, I thank God for my mother. Because when she told me this, it hurt me to hear it. I did not want to hear it. I did not want to do it, but I thank God he gave me the flipping grace to listen and to practice it. When the custody battle was about to start, my mom was like, don't fight. Let her have the kids. And I was like, what? She's like, no, 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 don't. I was like, no, listen, I'm amped. I'm good to go. My lawyer's good to go. We have a solid case. And she's like, yeah. And what you're going to create is acrimony. You're going to create tension. You're going to create beef. There's going to be sides taken. You're going to confuse the children. The, the, the woman that you had them with is now going to become your enemy, which means that now they have to decide who, you know, for themselves, who the enemy your, is. That's, kids. that's going to divide the family. Okay. Like she broke it down for me. She was like, listen, leave them with your mother. When the time is right, they will come back to you. Always. In the meantime, you go and build a home for them. That's all. Go and build yourself up, heal, build yourself up, build a home. When they are ready, you will have something for them to step into. All it I was the hardest. Say, yeah. All I, no, no, all I want to say is what your mother was saying, to bring it back to your very first sentence was, we have a bunch of weak men. I respect mm. men, so I'm not trying to, to denigrate them, but I agree. What he just said, to sum up everything he just said was, his mama told him, go be a man. Go be a man. I need, I need you, like, I need for you to address everything that is going on in your life right now with mm. manhood. That is your response. Yeah. What are you going to do? Man up. What would a man do? Don't break up the family. Think about someone outside of myself. Think about the mom. Yes. Think about the kids. Think about what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Cover them. Protect them. Provide for them because it didn't stop just because now there's it a didn't. divorce. I'm still a dad. Man up. You, you still have to father. I don't love this situation. This is where we are. So mm. how can I make the best of it? Man up. Yes. I love what your mom said. Yeah. That was it. And look, to the men watching this, it was hard. It was hard having difficult conversations with someone who no longer wants, you know, like any kind of amicable communication with you to call you up and request certain things. And you have to humbly acquiesce and say, yes, I'll send this money for that. Yes, I'll be there for this recital. Yes, I'll be. No. I can't take them home with me afterwards. No, I can't do this. But I still have to go there and father in whatever limited capacity I can. Let me go do that. And you have to, you have to understand this is bigger than you. Remember, like I always, t I always tell the brothers, the husband is the foundation of the home. The foundation is not seen, but it is felt. The wife is the glory of the man or the husband. She is seen. The way you treat your wife is a reflection of your, your character as a man. When she is glowing, it says a lot about you. When the children are glowing, it says a lot about you. But when your wife is depressed, it says a lot about you. Even your ex-wife. If your ex-wife is depressed and angry and bitter, it says a lot about you a lot of the time. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. What did you do to put that woman in such a state? Or, 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 or like, you know, why did you even, if she was always that way, why did you even bring her into your life? Right. You know, why did you subject your kids to this? Right. You know, so it always boils down to us. We are the foundation. If we are shaky, the family is shaky. And this is why so many women, when the man is shaky, they're like, I'm cutting my children off from this man because he's going to make them shaky too. She is making the best decision. But if you're a solid guy, then you should be solid enough to sit this woman down and still love her after the divorce, after the separation, and have reasonable, logical, calm, loving conversations. There's a reason why scripture says, love your enemy. Even when she's your enemy, love her. Think about what she needs from this. A lot of guys become vindictive. No, I'm not giving you anything. Yes. You're not getting anything. You know, that way, is not, yeah. By the way, not, sorry, 
uh, to be the bearer of bad news, that is the reason why the court system was set up the way that it was. Yes. Because men were not doing not what doing they were supposed, supposed to be doing. And at that time, when the when the laws were made, women weren't working the way we are now, making the kind of money we are now, having the education we are now, and having the kinds of opportunities we are now. So when a woman and a man would divorce, the man nine times out of ten would be the person who was working. Oftentimes she was a stay at home mom. Not always, but a lot of times. Mm. If she came out of the workforce, because we're talking, we're talking, you know, when the laws were created, if she came yeah. out of the workforce or gave up her education or her career in order to yeah. be a mom, then her husband divorces her, takes the education that he has, grabs a brand new woman, and then says, I'm not going to pay for you and the children that I made with you. Well, she doesn't have a job and she doesn't have a bunch of vocational skills and she's been outside yeah. of the workforce for a tremendous amount of time to where even mm. if she comes into the workforce now, she's going to come in at minimum wage. This is also why the welfare system exists. It's yes. because men were abdicating their responsibilities respon as fathers. So it drives me crazy when men are like, the system's not set up for me. No, the system is set it's up not. for you doing what you were supposed to do, and it had to come in and force you to do it. Yeah. It had to require you to pay for your kids because you wouldn't have otherwise. And how do I know that? You weren't. That's why it was created. Just you know, when, when, when the scriptures talk about divorce, it's, it, never, it never addresses the women. It never addresses the women. Even when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he was on some, the reason why Moses even allowed you guys to sign a certificate of, of, a, a certificate of divorce that puts your wives away was because of your hearts. You are stubborn, stiff-necked, selfish people. You just wanted to be vindictive. What a lot of these guys used to do was they would see a woman that they wanted, and it's still happening today, mm -hmm. and they desired the woman. They didn't look for a wife. They look for someone that they could smash, mm -hmm. someone who was cute that they could smash, mm -hmm. or someone who had money that they could exploit. Mm -hmm. they were, and, and, and because the wealth of the wife was handed over to the husband as a dowry, you know, we complain about bride prices, but the wife used to, the wife used to give a dowry. The dowry was her inheritance from her father. Mm -hmm. The man would take this money, keep it, and divorce the woman. Mm -hmm. And he would find the most idiotic reasons to divorce her. She cooked the meal. Um, she burnt the meal last night. I'm divorcing her. Mm -hmm. She looked at me sideways. I'm divorcing her. Mm -hmm. She said something disrespectful. I'm divorcing her. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you're sure. Um, uh, uh, Paul, Paul tells you, be patient with her. Be kind to her. Keep no record of wrongs. Be long suffering. Be humble. Do not exalt yourself above her. Bye. You know, all these things. You know, lay your life down for her. In, in other words, Kill your ego for her. But guys didn't want to do that. So Jesus was telling them, yo, listen, get your mind right. Get your heart right. And love this woman because God hates divorce. He understands that the woman desires you. That's why he even said it in the beginning to Eve. You will desire the man, but he will rule over you. Now, if you're not ruling rightly over her, of course, she's not going to give you what you need. If you chose a wife, not an adulteress, not a seductress, not a Jezebel, not a hoochie mama, not a baby mama, but not a wife. Fine. If you, period. Yeah. Story. Yeah. If you chose a wife and you do what you're supposed to do with a wife, she's not going anywhere. Yeah. She can be as mad at you as, as she likes. You will make your mistakes. You will frustrate her. You will irritate her. You will get on her, her last flipping nerve. But because she's a wife, she understands I am here for a purpose. I'm here on mission. There's a vision that I'm contributing to. And no matter how I personally may feel about this clown right now, the vision is bigger than the both of us. Legacy. And I understand, you know, when you come in sometimes and you're frustrated and you're angry, she'll understand, no, okay, fine. The vision is weighing heavily on my man. What can I do to help my man out? She's not going to be honest. Oh, you made me feel. This is not the time for that conversation. When you are calmer, she's not going to come back to you like any flipping VP would. And be honest with you, yo, the way you handle that was not the best. I understand the situation. But in future, if you want me on the team, I'm going to need you to do ABC. Okay, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? That is what's required. It's the vision. 
But when there is no vision, the people perish and men are perishing at a rapid rate right now because we have no clue what we're working towards. The very system that you're complaining about is a system that has given you a vision of, of emotional connectedness as the standard for marriage. That's the problem. You're looking at the system and this system has in, in, indoctrinated you from youth that this is what you go for. So when you're presented with the truth about this is how you're supposed to conduct yourself as a man, you fight that. No, it's too much work. They said, I'm just supposed to feel my way through this thing. No, you're supposed to study your way through this thing to show yourself approved. To be a man, you need to study. You need to learn. Then you need to apply. You'll make mistakes at times, but you're going to pick yourself up like a man is supposed to. That's why love perseveres. You don't give up. You don't commit suicide. There are people who need you. Yeah. There are people who need you. The vision still needs you. Push. Push. Yeah. And that woman, I promise you, that woman is not going anywhere because men like that are rare. Right. She knows, uh -uh. listen, Denzel could walk up in here flipping Tay Diggs, whoever the flip, who, whoever's the flavor of the month could walk in here. I don't care. This guy could be a multi-billionaire. Elon Musk could walk up in here. I don't care. I'm sticking with this guy because his character. No, I know this man would rather die than see the vision fall to pieces. Mm. He doesn't love me because of me. He loves me because of the vision God has given him for this family. And that's good enough for me because this man will love me with everything. He will love me on a Christly level. He won't love me according to his own strength. He will stay in the vine so that he's given whatever resources he needs to love me and to love the kids. That is true love. That's a marriage. You know. And 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 and, and scripture says what? Um, against these things, there is no law. Against the law of love, there is no, there's no other law. Because if you're doing what you're supposed to do in love. It never fails. It can't fail. It never fails. The court systems are not coming anywhere near you because you will resolve everything in the home. Which it also tells us to do. Which, Which it tells us to do. Saying, if you're reading, you can't stay the same because you're going to start seeing yourself and your marriage your relationship, your situations all over the place, and it's going to convict your heart, and you're going to be like, mm. oh, shoot, I did that wrong. Ah, oh, crap, mm. I did that wrong. Oh, man, mm. I guess I could have oh, I could have done that better. All right, mm. okay, God, help me do this now. Now next time, yeah. help me do that, and it's going to keep changing, and it's going to go from next time to last time to now yeah. you're doing it the way that he says, and it becomes yeah. incorporated into your lifestyle, and yeah, you will dwell together in peace and understanding. In peace. Um, yeah, you will. You absolutely will. But it has to start with the men. It has to start with the men. Even in the book of Flip, I forget which book it is. Is it is it Malachi? Where God says, um, you know, if my if my people, my people? Nah, that's in the repent. It's yeah. In the Who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Mm. That part. Um, I, yeah, but I'm not. Sh I'm not sure if if the second part of um, uh, that I want to get to actually um, is linked to that. But he says, "I will turn the hearts of the children um, of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers, not the mothers, not the mothers, the fathers, because we." Yeah, Chronicles. Thank you. Or is that Isaiah? I don't know. <laughs> I just remember. I, I just remember. Yeah. You know, it's the fathers. Why? Because the fathers are the cornerstone. The reason why, you know, the world system is pushing for the displacement of men is because once you get the men out of the way, the family crumbles. I'm wrong. You're right. Malachi. Four, it's a Malachi. Thank you. Malachi. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, um, once you push the men out of the way, the family crumbles. Once the family crumbles, the community crumbles. Nowadays, we all we talk about is society, society, society. God did not create us for society. He created us for community. 
societies have disparate communities with disparate value systems. A community has a shared value system. So as a man, you should not be worrying about what society wants from you or, 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 or wants from your family. You should be looking at your community. I agree with you. And, and to that end, mm. I just want to add just to that little point is um, frequently whenever I'm on the platform and I'm saying different things and I'm, I'm absolutely, um, I'm not saying, you know, First Corinthians, blah, 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 says this, but I'm speaking in biblical principles. Yeah. I will have a lot of men who will be like, but doesn't society say? And I'm like, I don't care what society says. Like, society I'm not says. ruled by society. I'm not even checking to see what society says. If for any other reason, um, the only reason I would care what society is saying is just so that I could be aware of it so I can talk to you about it. But yeah. it's not the standard. There's mm -hmm. so many people today going, yeah, but, you know, doesn't society say? I'm like, that's not the standard. Yeah. It's not. So if you're living for society, yeah, you'll first of all, you'll never please God because mm -hmm. you're not even going to care what God is saying. You're, saying. Now, you're, now you care what society wants, thinks, and mm. feels. It's, there's no two ways about this. It's either you're going to care what God wants, thinks, and feels, and that's going to be your standard, or something else is. And wide is the road that leads to destruction. Yeah. And, and you know, like, wh like while we're on the topic of societies, let's just remember societies get engineered. Yeah. Yeah. They get engineered. The, they get and designed. Not by the great architect. And not by God. Men sit together and decide, okay, fine. This is how we're going to break down the communal structure so that we can create a societal structure. And if you look at the UN, which is the presiding world authority right now, the UN's agenda is to create a society, a one world society, where you conform to their image and their standards. They don't want you speaking your own language. They don't want you practicing your father's culture. They don't want they don't you worshiping you, your own God. Truth they don't want you worshiping your own God. They're going to create a society in which you're told who to worship, how to worship, you know, um, like, I hear atheists talking about, oh, well, you know, democracy has given me the freedom to, you know, not work. Listen, even atheists are going to have to worship in the new societies. Okay, there is no freedom. There is no community. That's where we're heading. You don't believe me? Go read the UN charters. <laughs> it will shock you. You know good the well, one I know. I'm person. Oh, oh, you, know you, 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 you put me on to this. I'm just I'm just <laughs> you saying. put me on to this. It's not, you know. and I, to that end, everything, everything is not as it seems, guys. Everything is not mm. as it seems. And, and scripture says everything. That's the crazy part. Yeah, I it tells us. Onto, scripture already said, but, um, we don't look at how these things are taking place and, and impacting our world and our society right now. Yeah. And we need yeah. to. We need to. Look what happened in the States recently. Um, now you can't even um, uh, refuse vaccinations on religious grounds. Is that what they just did with vaccines? Yes. That's a problem. You can't. You can't. And and they, <laughs> you know, as men, anybody who reads scripture understands why that's a problem. But go ahead, as men. Yeah, as men, we we need to be clued up. We need to know what's going on because our, our families depend on us. And most men have no idea what that even. What it, they don't. You know, most men are not thinking about vaccines and how they're not, so good yeah. by that. You should be thinking about all these because, like, they're pumping, especially black parents. The mercury levels in a lot of these vaccines. Do you know that like black bodies take much longer to expel mercury than other races? Which means that when we're pumping our babies full of vaccines at an early age, we're poisoning them from an early age. We're poisoning them from an early age. But because we are so, you know, we want to fit into society so bad, we're saying, hey, send the kid for, for the vaccine. We don't question. We don't ask any, 
any, uh, we don't do our due diligence. Someone comes, a teacher shows up a, with a social worker and tells you that your child has ADD. And you're not even stopping to think, what does that mean? And He's a little boy. On Ritalin. And, you just on Ritalin and put him in like, like special ed class. Meanwhile, what they're saying is your son is way too intelligent, way too, way too vibrant. He's got too much life in him. We need to dull that you know, down. We need to dim, like, dim, like dim his light. And you're like, okay. You know? So it's, we have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to do as men. Mm-hmm. You know, we are supposed to, don't be grooming your kids for jobs. Everyone's talking about the fourth industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. Forget the fourth industrial revolution because the scripture is telling you, leave an inheritance for your children. Don't prepare them for jobs. Leave an inheritance for your children. So if you have a job now, your aim should be to be, able to, to be able to create passive income for your child so that your child can pursue the giftings that they were given, the calling that was placed within them. Okay. Don't break your child's spirit the same way your spirit was broken. You wanted to be a florist. You wanted to be a farmer. You wanted to be um, um, uh, uh, um, a husbandman, like, re- like rearing cattle, a cattle rancher. You wanted to do that, but you were pushed into a... Uh, of the legal profession. You were pu- pushed into the accounting profession. You work in the call center. Fine. You be the sacrifice for your child. Take that money, build wealth, pass it on to your child so that they can do what they were created to do and then they can gain wealth from what they were created to do. Your gift will make room for you. A job does not make room for you. That's why people will do anything in the job space to get ahead. Because it's not their gift. They will kill to get a promotion because nobody's recognizing their gift in the job space. Yeah. Then they say, oh, ambition is good. No. You don't need ambition when, you, when you're operating in your gift. You flow. It creates room. Let me stop. Like, I'm... Um, um, <laughs> You're on one. No, it's all good. Yo. Listen, at the end of the day, um, yes, we need men. Men need women. Women need men. Um, our families don't work well without you. Ultimately, we need really strong families, and the foundation for that is the man. Um, and we need to know that. We need to understand that. But we need the men to understand that they need us too. We yeah. really need men to understand that they need us, and we really really need men to start making better choices because your choices affect everybody else. Mm. At the end of the day, it, it is all on the man because the man picks the woman. The man mm. does the woman doesn't pick the man. The man picks pick the man. The woman. No. Even if we pick mm. you, you can all day long, nope, not marrying you. I might even mm. be in love with you, but I'm not marrying you. I'm marrying her. Mm. And that's it. And there mm. goes the legitimacy and the wealth and there goes the vision and the purpose and the legacy and all of that goes there. Um, yeah. And you have a single woman over here who is whatever. So, and I'm not saying there's no value. I'm like, don't get crazy on me, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm saying ultimately the responsibility for the family is with the father and he carries the legitimacy with him. And so we do need you to start thinking about that and the responsibility that that carries and to start picking wives. If y'all don't pick wives, we're not going to have families. We won't. You know, can I just speak to the brothers quickly? Um, Mr. Jones, 2D Thoughts, um, Austin, the dreamer. Um, first off, shout out to the, to all three of you and any other brothers who are on the, on the live right now for watching, um, and for listening to another man talk. You know, um, it's always a privilege for me to speak to men and to have men receive what I'm saying as men and not little boys, you know. Um, because it keeps me accountable, you know, cause you guys are not ignorant, you know, so, um, it's, it really is a case of iron sharpening iron. And as someone who has been married, 
who's been well, who's been single, who's been married, who's been divorced. You know, um, I just want to encourage you. You know, if you found a wife, love her because they don't come around often. R- very rarely do you hear like if you read scripture, <laughs> you know it says. No, she's rarer than rubies. And her value is worth more than the rubies that she's rarer than. So if you have found a wife, love your wife. More importantly, love yourself enough to love your wife. And then love God so much that you have no choice but to love yourself by loving your wife. Because every single thing is tied in to love. There is nothing greater. People say like, oh, like love is not enough for marriage. Yes, the world's definition of love is not enough for marriage. Feelings is, are not enough. Right. right. But Feelings. the scriptural, but the scriptural yeah. is more scriptural, than enough. Scriptural love is willing to love someone. Yeah. In, in terms of like, I am submitting my will to love. I'm submitting my will. That has nothing to do with yes. That is a decision. I will to love you every single day for the rest of my life. That is a decision mm. I'm going to make. And therefore, I'm yeah. going to act in love toward you no matter yeah. how I feel. Because yeah. I'm not always going to feel like doing it. Feel that. like loving you. Yeah. And you're not always going to show up in a way that invites or inspires that. Love, you know? yeah. And what are we going to do when we come into those places? Remember the covenant. Remember the yeah. command, I will to yeah. love you. Today, yeah. I'm going to pretend like I love you. Why? Yeah. Because the more that I do that, the feelings will follow my behavior, mm. my decisions, my commitment, yeah. my covenant. Yes. Yeah. You know, so again, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to speak into your lives. And I'll tell you this much. If you can listen to a man you don't even know, as he speaks into your life and take on board what he says, trusting that what he has said, you know, is beneficial to you. You can do the same with your wife, who you live with and who you know is invested in your well-being and your success. If you can humble yourself to sit under my spe- um, um, uh, words, you can definitely l- listen to her words um, as well, you know, and you will see the God and what she says, because you have invested in scripture, you've, you've read the scriptures, you've taken your, um, um, the time to study, to show yourself approved unto God. So you will hear God and what she says and where there is no God in what she says, you will wash her with the word. Yeah. You will show her what, what, what needs to be done. Teach her what needs to be done. Lead her so that one day you can present her to yourself a radiant, bride you would have done that that's your glory the work the greatest workmanship of of a man is his wife and his children they will either glorify him or they will shame him glorify yourself by loving them loving god and honoring them and honoring the marital bed i i pray blessings on all three of you and any other brothers who are watching. I pray strength. I pray wisdom. I pray knowledge, understanding. I ask that the Lord gives you the capacity, increased capacity for submission to him so that you may submit to her in love, thereby teaching her to submit to you in love. Because even Christ himself submitted himself to the church He submitted himself to the disciples and washed their feet. May you have a servant attitude, a servant heart. Because that is what men were created to do, to serve. The very definition of boy and man is servant. Read the etymology. It'll blow you away. We were created to serve, but the world has told us we're here to dominate people. No, we're here to dominate the earth. We're here to serve people. Specifically your wife and your children through God. 
or, or rather serve God through them. 25 seconds left. I pray blessings upon um, all of you in Yeshua's name. Amen. D. This was wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you all. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. pleasure. If this was your first time, don't let it be your last. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. We do this every Friday, 9.30 p.m. PST.